Hello, everybody, and welcome in to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Today, we got another episode of Winter is Blooming for you. And I'm so very excited. This is Season 7, Episode 5, titled East Watch. It was written by Dave Hill, directed by Matt Shackman. I'm Colton Robertson, and I'm joined by Joseph George. What's up, homie? Oh, what up, what up? Always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it is always a pleasure to have you. And another another solid addition to Season 7. You know, uh, we got off to a slow start mm-hmm. at the Season 7 premiere, but I think since then, you know, you can feel the accelerated pace, certainly, but I don't think that's caught up with the show yet. Not quite. Um, no, no, not quite. Yeah, I'm not having any um, sense of, like, the show getting worse. You know, a lot of people like to say that, like, no. just... Season seven, it's all downhill from there. Uh, no, this this uh, these last couple episodes have been been very good. Um, in my oh, opinion. very this, yeah. These are these are really strong. Uh, they you know they they do move around quite quickly, like from Dragonstone to East. I mean, it is one boat ride. It is all they would do. You know, some people right, are like right. they're just traveling crazy distances so fast, and it's like, well, I mean, they just took a boat to Dragonstone to to Eastwatch. I mean, it's it's literally a boat. Yeah, like, and, you know, in previous wanna... seasons, you know, maybe we get a scene on that boat where they have a discussion, Fair. and you know, uh, but regardless, it's mm-hmm. it's not making a difference for me yet in terms of just how quick it feels. Yeah. Um, no, it feels feels all right still. Feels good. Feels good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I got a. Uh, it's it's a good one in terms of those favorites. I'm excited to get to them, but if you're ready, okay. I'm ready to start in the reach. Oh yeah, let's do it. Beautiful. So in the aftermath of the Battle of the Gold Road, Sir Bronn pulls Jamie Lannister from the depths of Blackwater Rush and onto the shore. I like. This. And after Jamie's failed, yeah, Sorry, Blackwater just, Rush. No, uh, the Battle of the Gold Road. I've never heard. I've, I've never heard like uh, just that battle. I've always wanted to call it something. Um, but I've always just said that like, Quentin the gold road. decides to wipe everyone out, you know. Um, Maybe it's yeah. because the road is full of but, gold. Yeah, Battle of... Yeah, they that's were what, transporting she, gold. The that's Lannister what she's jet. scorching, mm-hmm. you know. The gold road oh. from the depths of Blackwater Rush. Man, yeah, that's... I don't know. It's a hard, hard-ass hard opening. Yeah, no, uh, anyway. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, Bronn pulls Jamie onto shore there, and Jamie has, you know, failed... His attempt to slay Daenerys Targaryen and effectively ending the war. Uh, and Bronn tells Jamie the only reason he res- rescued him is because you don't, nobody gets to kill you until I get what I'm owed. Mm-hmm. She doesn't get to kill you. Cersei doesn't get to kill you. Even you don't get to kill you. Only I get to kill you. That's right, Bronn. Uh, it was it. That's I love, right. I loved that. Yeah, his little, um, and Jamie, you know, saying like, uh, I think he popped back up and was like, "That was that's just one of them, man." Like, yeah, like she's got there's, she's got three there's of three them. of those motherfuckers. And, and he's like, "Yeah, well, if she decides to really use him, Bron goes, yeah, you're fucked." And Jamie's like, "Well, what do you <laughs> you mean we're fucked? Dragons are like, where our partnership ends, sorry, brother. Yeah, yeah, ain't no fucking way, dog. We ain't we ain't rolling like that. I ain't fucking with it. And I can't blame him. He Not does one say bit. One line. I respect Bron's." He says, I won't be near or in King's Landing whenever she decides to burn or use those dragons or something like that. But he's at he's at yeah. the final um is he at the final meeting actually there or he's just in his castle somewhere um at that point. What do you mean the final meeting? Isn't he isn't he a master of something at the Braun? Doesn't he make it out? Oh yeah, he's a master of coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like is he at that uh I don't, when they choose Bran, uh, you know, whenever I, whenever, I don't there. recall if he's there. I don't think he is. I don't think he's there during that little decision making time. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, I think he fucks off after. I think it's during like season seven, episode four, or season eight, episode four. Mm-hmm. I like. I don't think we see him again until that ending of the finale. He avoided. I feel like he goes north, threatens Jamie and Tyrion. And then is like, but I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to leave. Okay. You do you. Yeah, I was trying. And to, I'll see you later. I just didn't yeah. know if there was if if like that line was like a little foreshadowy, a little bit of him. I don't know if he I was, mean it yeah. is. It is foreshadowy for the fact that she does eventually That's go and true. use those dragons. That is true. Uh, yeah. 
But Braun is not in King's Landing when that takes place, I don't believe, okay. if, if I recall correctly. A man of his word. Um, um, he's telling yeah, Jamie no, the that's... truth here. Um, very it's when shit stops for him, and I... It would stop for me as well. Uh, no, no amount of gold. I can't get any more gold if I'm scorched alive, you know. Uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah. Jamie still shell shocked. Remarks on the destructive power of Drogon alone, and realizes, you know, we don't stand a fucking chance. And uh, yeah, Bron thinks it'd be safer for him to jump back into the river than to deal with Cersei's wrath and report back <laughs> what just happened. Yeah, not. Not the dragon that they just dealt with. Not you know that that was all scary, but just telling Cersei this news. Might as well jump right back in, okay. buddy. All right, uh, you're fucked. Damn. Yeah, that's a uh, that is scary, and I, I don't know. I do, I do love how just Cersei is is as fearful as Daenerys with three dragons. Oh. Like it is. Yeah, and she's she's just her. Mm -hmm. It's because she has she she doesn't give a fuck about anything. Yeah, she's gonna take what she wants. And she's gonna do it's what over she for wants. her. That's true. Not but, uh, quite now, though. <laughs> uh, but so. uh, all the while, on the gold road, further along it, uh, Tyrion Lannister grimly assesses the carnage of the battle, seeing the ashes of the wagons, horses, and Lannister soldiers. Um, you can still see the like husks of where people mm -hmm. used to be and them dis disintegrate into ash. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's rough. It's a rough one. Uh, the prisoners of war are being herded by the Dothraki to Daenerys with Drogon. Uh, you know, he's fine. He's chilling after that scorpion bolt. He's he's cooling. But uh, he goes ahead and perches up behind her. And again, just the sheer scale of Drogon is fucking astounding. Uh, that that yeah. a gorgeous beast. Oh yeah, as John has put it. Um, <laughs> Not exactly the word I was looking for or thinking of. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I guess we are in season seven now, so we're nearing the end anyways, but it's, I mean, they, there's never a time where Drogon or any of the dragons ever look bad. And it's, it's insane that they've only gotten better. Like, I thought, like, they, at the end of they Thrones. They look so fucking and, good. At the end of Thrones, like, the dragons are just, they're just dragons, like, as they would look in real life at that point. But then yeah. in House of the Dragon, they're like, checkmate. Here you go. We're going to give even, you somehow. Even better. Yeah, we're somehow going to make it better. But no, Drogon just on top of this little cliff, you know, whatever at the end. Oh, no. Yeah, it's uh, this is another good another good little moment about the potential conversation Drogon had beforehand. You know, like, uh, all right, when I say this, you go ahead and roar loud as fuck so that they all uh, kneel yes. down for me. Uh, you yes. know, uh, the the pregame pep talk that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You got you got this, buddy. Uh, now, when but, I uh, say when I say that they have a choice to make, you know, and, yeah. and then go ahead and give of, them a good old roar. Yeah, Let them, them know <laughs> they don't. Yeah. Some of them are going to kneel because you're you're there. But then I'm going to need you to look really, really scary and roar as loud as you can. And then you'll make yeah. everyone else kneel. Uh, no, it using a that that we'll connection. Give them, we'll give them the illusion of choice. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I guess that. Yeah, true. Yeah, she's. I mean, really, this is her her first victory in Westeros. Yes. Yeah. Big time. And yeah, I guess you know the Lannister Lannisters did just wipe out another house. They did. You know, High Garden is gone, but in in her first victory as well. Here goes another, um, which is is crazy. And, like, it is hitting me this time that she is – she's not acting any different um, from Essos to here, you know? Like, like no. Tyrion kind of thinks that there's, like – we're now that we're in Westeros, there's, like, different we're, rules we're that we have to follow. Yeah, like, yeah it's, like, yeah. civil – civilized war, whatever. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's uh, – Organized Same. kingdoms, you yeah. know, like it's yeah. in Essos, it's just a bunch of countries. Everyone's vibing, doing their own fucking thing. So, of course, if you're going to be a conqueror, that's the place to do it. But the it's set up over here, you know, like it's mm -hmm. there are places you have to acknowledge and respect the sanctity of. Yeah. Um, but uh, Daenerys doesn't uh, see it that way. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Daenerys appeals to all of the uh, the prisoners of war here, bringing up the rumor spread about her by Queen Cersei and warnings of brutality that the Dragon Queen would bring, burning down homes and murdering over uh, the rich and poor alike, uh, to no one's benefit but people like Cersei Lannister, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Wants to break the you know, wheel. She, 
Yeah. Yeah. She aims. She aims to destroy the wheel of power that rolls over everyone, um, and she offers them a choice: bend the knee and join her in her quest, or refuse and die. And Tyrion looks at her like, um, well, not much of a choice there. Yeah. Uh, I guess technically a choice, you know. Yeah, you can't. You can pick one or the other. Um, yeah, there is there is a choice to be made. In uh, the in the literal sense of what a choice is, yeah. yes, there is an either or at play here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you just gotta be. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. In Ned Stark, you know, if Ned Stark's alive, he still holds true, probably, and he's like, all right, you know, um. I'm good old Ned. I'm standing to live. I don't know. I, I'm curious if you do plop Ned in the situation, what he does. Um, the armies would be have to be different if he's fighting for the Lannister army. You know, I'd say. It's yeah, no, it'd be a whole. But, there'd be a but, whole you know, other situation going uh, on for sure. But uh, yeah, uh, I just don't know how I feel about about this uh, Tarly situation. Like, especially Dickon. I'm like, at that point, I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, don't. No, yeah. There's a there's a whole lot at hand here. You know. Uh, I think. The the thing I, I'm taking away mostly from it is it's not really the Tarleys decision or like the, it's not meant to make them look dumb or like have it be a bad decision. It's meant to just show what Daenerys is going to do. Like she doesn't oh, care. For sure. Like she does she um, does not care about name. She does not care about who you are. It is like if you are against her, you will die. It is as simple as that pretty much so no yeah and the i i went with Tyrion for my character this episode mm -hmm. and it's in part because of the bargaining he does here for the lives of the tarleys you know and uh mm -hmm. you know he observes that randall's allegiances have been flexible as he previously did not serve cersei up until like literally last week um so you know why yeah. die for her you know why why do that um so it is a bit of an odd stand to take yeah. at this point um yeah and you know his kind defense, of a kind of a matter of convenience in the writing room, I would guess. Yeah, um, his defense was it somewhat made sense, you know, saying that Cersei was born in Westeros, she's lived her whole life yeah. in Westeros, she knows all this stuff, and then Tyrion, you killed your father, um, you know, you betrayed your home, you left, now you're serving a foreign queen with a foreign army, you know, that who are just barbaric and not, you know not civilized whatever and i think yeah, that's, yeah. I that's get, his sort of no, and and, and the uh, the argument does make sense i i completely get where where this nationalist uh conservative gentleman mm -hmm. or randall tarley is coming from of course uh i think he just wanted to be the first one in the history books to go down as like the first executed by a drogon you know by like, by like dragon, honestly yeah. if if i'm uh randall you know tarley in this situation i'm like well Cersei's fucked, you know, like, I'm, I'm not getting what Jamie promised me, I'm old, I was gonna die in a battle, you know, I might, I might as well go by dragon right. fire, you know, be the first one to go, maybe that's why Dickon joined, thing. I don't know, maybe but yeah, I, when, uh, yeah, like, yeah, Dickon goes and steps on, steps on up after that, and, uh, he's like, all right, no, you don't, Tyrion goes, you don't need to fucking die with your dad, dude, like, don't do that, L you stand back everything like sh sit down boy mm -hmm. you know basically uh like you are a dumbass and randall kind of looks at him like bro like, like really? I, I respect it but damn uh yeah i didn't and at this very moment randall knew <laughs> he fucked up uh yeah via you know ousting the last living member of his family Whoops, you know, my entire house is about to be wiped out. Doesn't matter. Samuel Tarly, he did take the black, I understand, but he is still there. The house isn't gone. I guess I, I did think the Tarly house was completely gone, but we do have one still living, and he does make it out um, at, at the end there. He does become a maester. Well, he, so... just, he did ditch them, though. Yes, he does. He becomes the, the oh, grand I mean, maester. Yeah, okay. But are they gonna, you know, are they could still he, holding he, all the same traditions and such? Are they getting rid of that? You know, are they just saying you know, fuck he does have shit? a son? You know, is Sam not his son? But 
yes, us, you know, like they just can't fuck and have their own kids, which technically he didn't. Right. Um, hmm. I wonder. I wonder what the new world looks like post. Yeah. You know, post uh, brand taking over. Mm-hmm. You know, are, are, do they observe the customs of like Noth, where it's like there are no bastards. If you have a mm-hmm. child, you have a child. That's your child. You yeah, know? and like, that child uh, is actually the future of. Uh, you know, it is a Samwell. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe they. they well, get and we name. do, we do get that little bit at the end where they're like, and uh, in so many years, we will all reconvene. Like they are no longer observing the traditions of, like, because your son is your son, he's going to be king. Mm. That's no longer the thing anymore. Yes. They are going to democratically That's elect right. uh, okay. a head of the head of the kingdom. So you know, maybe the the name stuff doesn't matter quite as much. You know, mm-hmm. it still matters in the sense that like. You know, you don't want your family line to just end, you know, like... True. For your own sake. Yeah. D- does yeah. does Gilly and Sam end up getting married at all? Or are they just... They're just Not kind of, on screen. Um, I think that it's just kind of, you know... I guess he can't, actually, if he's becoming the Grand Maester as well. If, yeah. if they still hold all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who knows? So who knows? Um, who but, knows? Hmm. But, uh, yeah, Daenerys accepts Randall's answer, you know? I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. You do... You don't want to serve me. That's fine. You're going to fucking die then. That's cool. Um, prepares to carry out the sentence, but Tyrion intervenes. Like, can can you send him to the wall? He's a great warrior. Let's send him. And Randall's like, nope, not my queen. She can't do that. Um, and Daenerys is like, all right. And uh, three Dothraki men approach and op- apprehend him. But Dickon suddenly speaks up, insisting he will have to be killed too. And uh, Randall tries to silence his son. Tyrion reminds him that he is the future of House Tarly and insists that he must submit uh, reminding him what happened to House Tyrell. And uh, Randall silently nods in agreement to Dickon, indicating his tactic approval of his heir to bend to the knees so Dickon may be spared. But uh, Dickon's like, nah, guess I'll die. No, I'd um, rather die by dragon, too. Um, yeah. I, I, You know, maybe if it was beheading, he would have bent the knee. You know, if it was just a normal-ass beheading, he's like, yeah, whatever. Um, no, yeah, it, 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 it Dickon's choice is the one that I truly question. Like Randall's like, get, yeah. you know, Randall was like, uh, this is, this, that was Randall's Dickon. first battle, man, second battle, I guess, you know, uh, they, they, he, he went to, to high garden, he fought there, but that basically, that wasn't a fight, you know, that was just a slaughter. Right. And then, and then he got slaughtered or saw everyone get slaughtered around him by Daenerys. And then is like, all right, I give up. You know, he's like, this, this is just it. I, uh, you know, I, oh, I Dick know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, he's like, he, he, he learned that everyone shit themselves when they die. And that's, that's about it. That's his entire that character arc, um, in the show. Um, yeah. No, and I mean, like, again, we are approaching a point where now we are given this Sam's family has been murdered by the woman that John has sworn fealty to. Mm-hmm. Ooh, and eventually, way. eventually he knows that. And eventually he voices his concerns about her. And John has to be like, I bent the knee. I did the thing. There's nothing I can do now. You know? Uh, mm-hmm. And man, yeah. I forgot so. about that little detail. Yeah. When you, when you do put it that way. Yeah. He did. You know, he doesn't like his family too much. You know, his dad, he's never liked, but his brother, I, I don't think Sam has ever had really. No, yeah. Really like, I, it seems. Uh, um, but even no, just. Yeah, Dickon, Dickon didn't deserve that. He was just. Uh, he only got laughed at because of his name, man. You know, he saved Jamie Lannister, for one, from, you know, a Dothraki. I don't know. What's it know. worth? What's yeah. it worth being saved by a man named Dickon, you know? <laughs> You'd rather die. You'd rather. Yeah, I like. Dickon's and, and not only that, but like, why as a Tarly, as like a Tarly uh, paternal figure, would you want to imply with your son's name that there's Dick, Dick on Tarly? On you know, Tarly. there's <laughs> you know? Dick on Tarly. 
it could mean yes, dick Old on Charlie, choice. or that they just got that dick on them. That he's trying to say that the, like we got them dick on Charlie. <laughs> yeah, like team team Charlie got dick. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie's known for our, their dicks. Maybe I don't know. We don't know maybe the so. deeper lore maybe so. uh, in Game of yeah. Thrones. They don't. They don't give maybe us those Randall's details. got that thing thanging. You know. You know. Yeah, I, I did know. say you know Game of Thrones doesn't give us those details, but they very much do. Like it's like every once in a while they do. Um, yeah, like Pod just uh, an absolute banger uh dude can just bang uh Euron was known for having a, a nice a nice pp uh i think that's all the the dick knowledge that i'm that game of thrones dick knowledge that comes up to my mm-hmm. mind um Tyrion, you know uh, uh yes you know they the, say his joke the dwarf sized cock um and he's like guess again you know like he's he's like no nope, not a not a dwarf sized mm-hmm. cock on Tyrion there, isn't that so. the punchline to his honeycomb or like yeah that his was, dick hangs past his knees that was yeah. his last wish or something like that was to yeah I think that's what it was have a cock yeah, that to, swings past his past knees, knees yeah. so that the genie made so him he, a dwarf you know instead yeah. of yeah 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 but um there goes House Tarly <laughs> at least uh yep. sort of. Uh, in the new world, it can live again, and maybe if uh, Sam maybe. wants to, maybe. you know, do that. I don't even know. Maybe he just says, "Fuck it, house Sam, house Gilly, uh, right, house right. baby Sam." But, uh, but anyway, yeah, yeah. Murders? They uh, they they burn and it kills them instantly, and terrified the remaining sto- soldiers that were still standing instantly. Knee and uh, mm-hmm. Tyrion reflects uneasily over the execution, but then. We are heading to Winterfell, wherein at the God's Wood, Bran Stark wargs into a flock of ravens to fly over the wall into the land of always winter, apparently. Yeah, I guess. Oh, the land, of, it is, it is always winter. That's uh, an apt name, I uh, guess, uh, now that I know it's, it. It's wild that, like, on the fandom here, they're just all of a sudden dubbing shit. Like, they're like, yeah, the battle this of, is the land of always winter, you know? like of, uh, of Gold's Road uh, on Blackwater yeah. Rush as well. Uh, Blackwater yeah, Rush, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. Random shit. Um, but, uh, yeah, the land of always winter, which is an apt name, as it is always winter. Uh, through the Ravens, he sees the army of the dead led by the White Walkers and the Night King and traveling south towards East Watch by the Sea. His reconnaissance continues until the Night King snaps his head and looks directly at the ravens, at which Bran severs his connection, and he tells Maester Wolken that they must send ravens at once. And later on in Winterfell's council chamber, Arya observes her sister presiding over a meeting of the Northern Lords, saying that the king in the north should stay in the north. It's it's everything here. The shit that happens in the north council meetings fucking kills me. This is just it the whole time. It's just it the whole time. This is all that ever happens. It is so fucking funny to me that they want so badly to have a northern ruler and they just keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing like, you know what? Maybe you should be our leader. No, this guy won. He should be our leader. You know, like they just keep fucking shifting. I think about it that way. You know, I'm thinking about it from John's perspective as like he obviously has to just be doing these things right now in his head. You know, he's he just has to be the one. But from their perspective, it's like, damn, we had who's the who's um oh my god uh the Bolton Roos and uh, Roos the kid the. T- bastard fuck it ramsey holy shit yeah. um i was gonna let you figure it out man, i was like i, I want to um yeah, yeah. We went from you know Roos to ramsey to john and then john just basically instantly said peace out i'm leaving thanks for king of the thanks for the title guys but gotta yeah. go and then they're like never, all right I never want it. they're like okay sansa you're great Arya and Bran show back up all of a sudden. They're like, holy shit, what the hell's going on? They're like, all right, well, now it's Bran. Has to be Bran. Bran's like, fuck, I'm fuck, not even Bran fuck. anymore. I, I don't even like, want God, it. They're like, what the damn fuck? It. Can we have uh, any sense of normalcy in the north? You know, they're like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? So, yeah, I guess, from John's perspective. They just want very... so badly to be independent, but they recognize for some, like, their, their scope of what's possible is so limited that they're like, well, then we have to have a king or queen, you know, like, uh, we're in the north, the king of the north, you know, should, be should stay in the in north, the north. It's like, yeah, uh, it's like, but Lord Robert Glover and Lord Jan Royce, the veil vale, mm-hmm. from the Vale of Aaron is like, yep. Maybe we made a mistake in our choice of ruler. I'm like, 
Yon Roy, sit the fuck down. You are not from here. <laughs> yeah, you didn't hear this. He didn't hear John's speech, right? He wasn't there whenever they heralded him king of the north. Wait, yes, he was. Like, don't get me wrong. I get why everyone's like all of a sudden like, here's <sighs> actually, I don't get it. Hold the fucking phone. You elect, you choose your fucking king. Mm -hmm. If you chose your king and your king assesses what is best for his kingdom, as the people who elected him your king, you ought to go, you know what? Maybe he's got this figured out. You know? Like, maybe maybe he's on to something. Yes, and he left the North in the capable hands of the woman who we think could also be our ruler. What the fuck is the problem here? And what what changes if John is in Winterfell? Say John is there. If John's there, they're not doing anything to help themselves against the fucking White Walkers. Yeah, which I guess they don't really think is real. Too, they're like they're kind of like okay, well we trust you a little bit. Like you're all right, John. You're you're like ninety nine percent all right, but that. That last little... Th I mean, you're really passionate about this North shit. You know, maybe the wall just got you a little crazy. You're um, always thinking about the land of always winter, John. I don't know why, uh, but... Uh, maybe there's some validity to it. I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, Sansa listens to all of their complaints about John, but insists that he is their true ruler who is doing what he believes is right for their people, and she is his regent. And following the meeting, Sansa confides in her frustration in the Northern Lords with Arya, uh, who calls Sansa out for her diplomatically handling their concerns instead of shutting the Lords down. He's like, you just let them talk all that shit on Jon. I don't fuck with that. Um, and Arya thinks, you know, she should not let the Lords get away with insulting their king. And she's like, maybe we should do something about it. Yes, wink, this... wink, nudge, nudge. Did, was this like a, uh, I don't know, this whole thing in, in Winterfell with Littlefinger and, and everything moving on, did they know this conversation might have been heard? Like, are they like, are they already starting to like do some acting and shit to like? I, the thing is, is that I thought, I think the thing that spurs that is about to happen. Yeah, it's, it's I don't what it Littlefinger has, does. Has... It is the, the the scroll yeah that already yeah. reads and then she's like oh what the hell you know Sansa? why would you do that blah blah you know whatever or um so yeah they're, they're not even beefing because of little finger yet but they're already just beefing because. i mean like aria it makes sense that aria would actually have a problem with this like her you know just, like uh, like her not defending john or her yeah because I think the real beef in, in this episode was actually just like, uh, these are mom and dad's quarters. You always liked the nice things. It made you feel better than everyone else. And that's when they started mm -hmm. to be like, ah, oh, rah, rah, you know, rah, like me you mean to each other or whatever. Like even the John stuff was just like, hey, don't let that happen. Don't talk to John about it. And she's like, oh, well, I'm the leader. It's what, you know, what, you know, what, the, I don't know. Like, what, what do you want me to do? Um, yeah, that's true. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they are putting on a little, that's the thing. That's what makes this storyline so incredibly weak is that it's unbelievable and it, even under the scenario in which they're like putting on a show for Littlefinger, Littlefinger's hearing them in Sansa's chambers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know? Um, yeah, it does, I don't know. It doesn't doesn't really... It, it's just we had Arya like in her SO storyline doing so much cooler things and Sansa like... Yes, she was just kind of like a prisoner for a long time, but at least the people she was like with around, yeah, yeah. It, like it made made her storyline very interesting. But now it's literally just the king of the north should be in the north. You, uh, we maybe we should choose you above. It's maybe just we this, have yeah. beef. I'm not sure. Yeah. Do we have beef? Yeah, like it's just a whole bunch of that, and they. I don't know. Like, I, I suppose it might have started already, but I don't... Maybe they're trying to already concoct a way to fuck with Littlefinger, and then Littlefinger mm -hmm. kind of hands it to them on a silver platter here in a second, and that's why they're like... Oh. Like, they just capitalize on that, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Because they've already had a conversation about how they know exactly who Littlefinger is, how Sansa knows exactly who Littlefinger is, and how she knows he's not on her side. So maybe there's... 
something that happened off screen right around there. The fact that it all happens off screen at all is, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, um, like, it makes the twist okay at the end. It makes it like, oh, whoa, cool. Like, oh, Arya's not dying. It's Littlefinger. It's like, oh, like you know, what I don't know, but mm-hmm. would have been way cooler to to be in on on it. You know, Littlefinger's obviously not in on it, but the audience being in on it, I thought would have been a lot cooler. Well, and then that's the thing, though, is that if framing it like that, then it does take all the steam out of the twist. Like, you know they're not going to kill Ari. Like, the thing is, is that they decided they were going to frame this entire storyline around a twist that happens at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like they, they just had the twist that they wanted, that they knew. And then they were like, let's work to. back and from then, there. Yeah, right, yeah. right the other way. But, hmm. I don't know. Regardless, it's fine. But much later on, Arya stalks Littlefinger as he is walking through the grounds of Winterfell, and she sees him speaking with a servant, and she is too far to hear their conversation, but then follows him to his personal quarters and sees him chatting at the door with Maester Wolken. She eavesdrops and hears, you know, that this... This is the only copy. Um, And he, you know, is assured that it, it is. Peter replies that Lady Stark thanks him for his service. And Peter then briefly enters his room, leaves once again. And Arya enters Peter's chambers and rummages through his study and furniture, and hidden under his mattress, she finds a scroll. This turns out to be the scroll that Sansa wrote long ago to Rob, urging him to yield to Joffrey. And Arya, unaware that Sansa had written the letter under duress from Cersei in an attempt to save their father, looks horrified. She rolls up the scroll and sneaks out of the room, oblivious to a grinning little finger watching from behind a wall, supposedly. So, little finger wanted... Arya to find this scroll. Obviously, that, yes. that's his whole plan. He puts it in this little mattress fuckhole thing? What is, you know? What the fuck? What, what, you know? Like, I don't know. Maybe he knows Arya's just that good, you know? Like, I, but, like, to ma- ma- make it obvious that it's not out on the table just for anyone to grab, because then maybe Arya would be like, oh, he's wanted me to see this. But, like, you know, well hidden enough. Right. But, man, this is honestly, like, if you want Arya to find it, this might, that's a good ass spot, you know? I don't know. Like, for her to look there was good it's on a her. Big swing. You know, that's a weird, yeah. I mean, that, I just imagine that's not where he just puts little. <laughs> little finger just hangs out outside the room for like an hour and a half waiting for her to find it. And he's like, yeah, he's shit. Like, oh, uh, man, I think I hit it a little too well. Uh, but yeah, um, right when she, she pulled it He out, like knocks on the door, he's like, you're looking for something? Maybe yeah. you try here, you know, like uh My first thought is that it was under the mattress and then the little hole was just actually like, I don't know, supposed to be some fuck hole that he just fucks his mattress or something like that. I was like, that's my first thought when I saw that. I'm like, what the fuck? Why are they <sighs> I'm like, what is this? And then like, oh, the fucking obviously, little mattress buckle. The, the little stairs. things just in there. I'm like, oh, obviously, you know. Yeah, uh, he, he hid shit in there. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, no, it's it's the beginning of a pretty weak three episode storyline here. Yeah, uh, I'm glad it's this long too. Like, I'm glad it's only this long. Yeah. I forgot I Arya didn't show up. Yeah. until later in the that's, season that's you know what i thought it felt like a whole like a thing that was cooking for a whole season but really it's not that long you know it's it just let it i mean it basically started right now it'll cook next episode and then what is it the finale that that drops or is it yeah uh, yeah yeah so and it's like the end of the like it's towards the end of that storyline you know like they they let it simmer and let it simmer up to the point where it's like we're gonna execute aria and then like they don't um Pizza yeah. Baglish. Yeah, no, but uh, we're next in Old Town. We're at the Citadel, a conclave of maesters. Read Bran Stark's messages, warning of the army of the dead. But they are dismissive of his account. Um, a, a good example of the sort of fast tracking. This is probably something that would have happened mm. an episode later after Bran says we need to send scrolls versus, you know. I'm pretty sure they cut from him saying that to them reading it. They do. Um, yeah, they do. Yeah. And that's like, I don't have a problem with it, but it's a good example of the fast tracking of shit. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, uh, in this case, I'd say it's okay here. I don't know oh, what, yeah. what has to happen in between. It's just more stuff just happens. They're they're just like, I don't know. It, it felt like they were like, we need some filler. And the filler for Game of Thrones is just like, let's have these two people just sit in a room and talk. I just I don't, yeah. like, for no purpose, just let them go. Um, and yeah, I guess... You know, without all that, it is all just important stuff that happens. So it sort of 
makes the episodes feel more important without all of i don't know it's like I, i'd rather want all the filler though is the thing um mm -hmm. but the things that happen in these episodes at least like they all have a purpose you know and and they all no, are, yeah are and i mean purpose. like it's it's as simple as an editing choice really like like I That's said, they true. cut straight. They cut straight from that to him yeah, reading. The they scroll. could have just let like, it cook in the episode itself. Like yeah. that's maybe that's the brand saying that's the beginning of the episode, and this is more towards the middle. You know, like uh, mm -hmm. maybe. But uh, regardless, um, Samuel Tarley present only to swap out some books. Vouches for Bran and tells him tells the Maesters that Bran spent several years surviving in the wilds alone. Uh, you know, how does a boy who is a cripple younger than 15 survive beyond the wall for years perhaps we should listen to what he has to say and uh one maester mockingly tells samuel to practice uh with inscribing instead of entertaining myths and fables and sam counters that they should uh, use their position as maesters to warn the people to prepare for the coming night and uh archmaester ebro so pines that brand's message could be genuine it could uh very possible but uh, it's very possible but it could also be a disinformation spread by the Dragon Queen. Uh, Much more likely than... Uh, and frankly, than, like, I get it. Like, that... Yes, yes. It is sound. Very yeah, like, strange timing, you know. Like, it yeah, makes sense. Um, it really does. Especially, especially given what they reveal that they know here in a second. You know, like, they know Daenerys is willing to wipe out bloodlines you know like they're they're like maybe she wouldn't stoop so low as to try and you know mm -hmm. get the north the, the army to the north and you know but uh the maesters agree to send a letter to winterfell to you know get brand to reinstate his claims you know like let's let's see what you mean here let's get to the bottom of it fair enough uh, this you know usually i'm on sam's side totally um but this at least from the citadel makes sense if they're about to do what Sam wants them to do. They better be 100% damn sure. Like, uh, yeah, like, 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 yes, obviously we know because we're the we audience know. and we they know that they're coming. Know. But yeah, if you are about to mobilize the entirety of the Seven Kingdoms to go up to the north, like up to the wall, like this is a fair, like, hey, Bran, double check. Like we're just making sure. Um, so, I mean, like this, this I understand. Um but I, I love how Sam's just still, you know, it's like, you guys are still taking too long. No. Like, this is a logical right. decision for them to do, but it's like. He's like, it's and still, that's the thing, is that, like, he can only do so much. He, he He's trying mm -hmm. his best, but they don't know. Like, and that's the giant problem with these last, this last couple seasons is, like, nobody fucking knows, you know. Like, once they see it, they'll never unsee it, but goddamn. Uh, mm hmm but yeah, uh, the Maesters, you know, agree to send that letter. But as they regard the White Walkers as legendary beings akin to the children of the forest, who we know are real, and the Drowned God, who we prob is probably real. Yeah, uh, one of them's they, up there. You know, we know. I yeah, mean, yeah. Some, something's up there. Uh, they clearly want to believe Ebros's misinformation theory. And while they agree to investigate Brand's message further, they're skeptical of the claims. And after Sam leaves, one of the other Archmaesters asks if it's true. Is that the boy whose father and brother were just burned alive? And Ebros confirms this and admits he hasn't had the heart to tell Sam yet. Yeah. But, uh... Damn. Um, little... I don't know. I like... I like, uh... The old town. I love just the... The idea of the Citadel. Even in the... Free, like, it's kind of their, like, news at the time. Mm -hmm. You know? It's their internet. It's their call center. It's their... I don't know. It's like their They're operator. Everything. You know? It's like... I feel like if you need to send a raven to someone and you don't know where they're at, you just kind of hit up Old Town and maybe it goes through there. I don't know. I don't know how, what old, I mean, it seems that they just kind of fuck with history and get everything written right. down and tracking everything. But, um, I don't know. I love, I just, I love the, the trope of, of someone just needing to get the like doing the work themselves being like all right if it's not going to be done i'm going to do it i'm i'm going to have to do it myself I mean, um yeah i'll do it myself yeah maybe not in thanos's um, way uh maybe when it's more on the yeah, good side but, um of the story but yeah it still works uh, you know it's a hard yeah, line no, it, uh, from thanos but, regardless yeah, but. No. uh but yeah then we get like the most massive reveal in the history of this show in the most subtle way possible which is hilarious they don't call um, back to this they don't like clear it like i mean like 
No, Did this you... was... Because, uh... oh, I guess Sam does literally tell John, like, hey, your mother is is Liana, your but father is Rhaegar. This. But, yeah, like, this is... Well, actually, this is why. Uh, whenever he's talking to Bran, and Bran's like, he's not... He was not born in the north. He was born in the south. So his name is John Sand. He's like, wait a fucking minute. Wait a fucking minute. Wait a fucking minute. He's like, Gilly told me once about this fucking thing in high. You know. So he's like, it is called back to actually. That's I forgot insane. About so he does. So he does. He does take it in that Gilly did tell him this. Yeah, Prince mm-hmm. Ragar. I, I mean, like, I guess if she said Lyanna Stark, maybe that would have been a little more like Sam would have been like, oh, I gotta, you know. Like, let me hear oh, what this is. But yeah. the fact no, that, like this is... Yeah. I mean, he was right down some other shit, and he's like, all right, yeah. how many steps are he's pre- in this? He's or preoccupied or, you know, with the army of the yeah. dead. But, yeah, Gilly's, like, reading the, the notes of High Septon Maynards, uh, and, uh, you know, the High Septon issued an annulment for Prince Ragger so that he can marry another woman in Dorn. Hmm. And uh, this new marriage indicates that any children Rhaegar may have had with his new wife uh, are his true-born children and not bastards, and therefore... The rightful heirs to the Iron Throne. Um, Here's the confirmation. Like this is, you know, we had the, the, the cut from you know the tower to John's face, and like we're like, all right, obviously he is their child, but he still would have been a bastard and not the right. I will heir, never, you know? I will never forget. Uh, this is whenever I was watching this, I was still going to physical therapy for my knee, and for those of you who have joined us previously for this season specifically i talked about how my physical therapist and i Mm. we had like a a few awkward first couple sessions but then i asked him if he if he'd watched game of thrones and we just fucking blitzed it like Mm -hmm. we just talked about it all day every day i came i had sessions on mondays and obviously thrones premieres on sundays you know so um perfect no absolutely uh so this episode came out and i came in the next day and he was already like (laughs) you know he was like he, he, he was he was he was like shaking he was, he was shaking his head he was like and i was like i fucking i know brother yeah i was i know uh you know uh uh so we we both discovered at the same time that john snow was the true uh the true heir to the seven kingdoms mm-hmm. uh and, and aired that out together so that was uh that was a fun one uh, but uh yeah good old gilly just doing her read you know reading uh, which, learning, learning to read, which wouldn't be possible without Shireen. Um, I think, or was it Sam? No, did Shireen give her lessons? I don't think. Maybe a little bit. S is Shireen for did snake. a little bit. Yes. Yeah, a little bit. Yes. She taught her like the the first little lessons. I think maybe. Yes, or, I don't absolutely. know, but, but um, um, yeah, Clutch, yeah. Weird way to confirm it, but well, and that's the thing is it's so small that it, it could absolutely fly by any of the the casual viewer who has no idea what they're looking for. Yeah, and it's Prince Rag- going- Ragar. Or like she Prince says, Ragar. Ragar. Yeah. Or, yeah, so it's like, you know, it's not someone it's saying might Prince Ragar yeah. and, you know, or yeah. whatever. So yeah, it is it is an interesting way to do it. But uh, one of the biggest details in the entire storyline overall. Yeah. Blink and you miss it, though. Like, I remember... Like, my dad also watches it, you know? I don't think I caught it the first time I watched it. I think it was told to me after, and I'm like, wait, what? And I was like, what? Like, I was told by someone after, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, Yeah, like, I literally asked my dad. I was like, did you catch the thing in the the middle of the thing, you know? Mm Because I was like, if you didn't, I don't want to spoil that. Like, it it was kind of like a – it was a cool revelation, like, oh, you know, but it was was also kind of like, well, fuck, that's how I know it now, yeah. you know? Like, uh, I think the, the reveal co- later on is much cooler. Yeah, um, and the reveal the reveal that he's not a bastard is kind of meh compared to he is the child of Lyanna and Rhaegar, which we got before. Yeah. That's the real reveal, you know? And, and I, I mean, I guess him not being a bastard is pretty crucial uh, further on, but it's, I don't know, there's more oomph, I think, in the actual just parentage reveal rather than the mm. annulment one yeah but. no but uh sam will complains here about having to inscribe the bodily functions of high septon maynard and in, in exasperation with his situation samuel stalks out of the room and goes to the library he grabs several books and other items after a uh, contemplative <laughs> look at the atrium of the room and he meets gilly in the courtyard of the citadel where she and sam wait for him in a wagon 
And when Gilly asks if he is sure whether he wants to give up his studies, Samuel replies that he is tired of reading about the achievements of better men. Quoting his father there. Yeah. In a sad little... Oh, I didn't know that that meta. was from his father. Yeah, oh. his dad... His, he said something about how you will always be reading about the achievements of better men. Oh, you know, uh, damn. Oh, my God. And he has no idea. No idea. No idea. And they ride off into the night. Samwell is done. Which I love. I love that for him. He deserved better than the Citadel mm. was providing him. Even though, you know, he was he was doing he was paying his dues. But still, um, he got what he needed. And uh, mm. now he's now he's on his way uh, to where he needs to be. You know, everyone is everyone's going to where they need to go. Um, indeed, indeed. But now we are on to Dragonstone. This will bring me two of my favorites for the episode where the king in the north, Jon Snow, is walking on the grounds of Dragonstone Island where the dragon queen Daenerys Targaryen arrives on the back of her dragon. And Drogon roars at Jon at first and stretches out his hand or stretches mm. out his head to face the king in the north. Drogon calms down. And, dra- and recognizes John as a friend. Mm-hmm. Yes, he does. This is uh, this was my scene of the episode, and I didn't expect it to be. Um, I after I, it just moved me in a way that it has never moved me before. Very good. Um, th- I guess this is this is one point in the books that I think is actually, um, I think Dr- yeah, Drogon and John meet in the books. I'm pretty certain, and it, it's like one of the few people that the dragons do not just immediately hate. Like, they are they are always hatred, like, hate, just mean and, you know, nasty Ow. to everyone. Um, to John, Like, John meeting Drogon. I think, oh, man, I don't know why I remember that, but I just do. Why does that ring a bell? I don't know. I, I've never made it that deep in the books, so. Um, I just know that the books ended with him dying. That's true. Yeah, so no way I'm he like, could have met. Drogon. Yeah, I'm like I doubt I I can't imagine that he ever met Drogon in Wait the books. Um, yeah, no. Okay, no, he couldn't have. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm. Maybe it's. Maybe it's Tyrion. But no, he meets the other dragons. He just goes down in the dungeon, and that's not really mm-hmm. okay. I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm confusing then. Um, but I don't know. I love I love how you know we know he's a Targaryen. And, oh, yeah. and and that's that that seems to be this why Drogon's chill. Um, he oh, just, absolutely. He senses his boy. Um, He's like, oh, what's up, buddy? How you doing? And uh, John reaches out and strokes his snout with his hand after t- removing his glove, much mm-hmm. to Danny's surprise and uh, arousal. And yes. when John's yeah, she was she's, noticeably- she's watching. She's watching him, you know? Um, yeah, she was like, and she's like, Drogon, you're blocking my view, dog. Like, come on, I want to see uh, what's going on. Uh, what's going on here? Um, yeah, she was she was very interested in Jon uh, this episode. Um, I don't know if, if that's just Amelia Clark's performance coming off that way or if they're really, like, written, it's written that way for her to, to try to portray that. But she, like, right. multiple times she was like... Uh, I don't know, later on, like, in the, the, it's not the war room. I always call it the war room. It's the, is it the, the chamber war room? of the painted table? Thank you. Yeah. Another one of those amazing yeah. names. Uh, oh, but, and, uh, Amelia Clark is acting there, by the way, just, uh, <laughs> very, very horny for John, uh, and like visibly so, yeah. uh, it, yeah, that's why I'm like, I don't know if it's just Amelia Clark or if if D and D were like, hey, just I mean, hey. you the only thing on your mind right now is that man right there, you know? I mean, that yeah. it's it's what it seemed like. Um, what but, a fucking man! No, but uh, you know, when John, slightly under duress, uh, agrees that the dragons are beautiful beasts, <laughs> uh, Danny responds that the dragons are her children, you know, and Jon Snow observes that you know, you weren't you weren't gone for long, and. You know, she's like, no, I wasn't. You don't like that, do you? And she, he's like, I'm not sure how I feel about it. And she's like, well, I have fewer enemies now than I did before I left. So, mm-hmm. uh, this is also the setting for one of my like favorite behind the scenes like videos where John or Kit Harrington like extends his cloak and like flaps them like wings. Um, I don't know yeah. if you've ever seen that, uh-uh. but it's it's a funny little yeah. clip. Uh, the yeah, wind's no. like blowing, and he's like. Uh, that's it's, it's it's a cute one. Very um, nice location here. 
Um, oh, gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, gorgeous. my God. Okay. Yeah, just uh, I mean, I, I, Drogon, just any dragon at the end of a cliff, I don't know, just like automatically with a horizon, you know, the ocean in the background mm-hmm. and the wind Dude. is going like. Mm. Yeah, and, is. and again, incredible visual effects in terms of the interaction between John and Drogon. Like it looked real. Like, I mean, his and, hand like seemed to be like not just smoothly like running. No, like, like it seemed the, to be like going. Yes. Getting hung up on it. Yeah. yeah like, it's, I wonder it's if, if they made some like something actually practical for him to feel on that close up shot, and then when they cut back, it's, it's just green screen from there. Probably. But, but no, that it was impressive. Like it was like, man, he's. It's not like uh, before when they kind of hid like Danny's hand behind the dragon sometimes, so they didn't no, have to do like, that. They were like, that yeah, they're things. like, hey, check this out. Yeah. He is touching Drogon right now. It's impressive, and I love the blink. Yes, the slow blink of the eye. That's kind of like, yep, I'm comfortable with this mm-hmm. guy. Like, I accept you. Yeah. Like, um, um, we're we're chilling. We're we're chilling yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, Daenerys then asked John about the Battle of the Bastards, and to him quote, "You know, Davos said something about you taking a knife in the heart for your people." And John deflects this, saying, "You know, Davos likes to embellish things uh, to a degree." So, and she goes, "So it was a figure of speech," and he just so badly. I wish he was like, uh, "No, I took seven. Um, you know, like I didn't oh, just yeah. take I got one. I stabbed seven times and was legally dead for twenty four hours. And maybe that is that why he wants to hide. Is he is he just humble, you know, and he doesn't want to, you know, be like or whatever, or is it kind of like a just he'd rather not talk about it, you know? Like, I think it's I, I I don't think it's a humble thing. I think it's that he does not like thinking about that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that would be that'd be fucked, you know, to be like, yeah. I mean, he wanted to also know the truth about like death. You know, like they all have these stories about an afterlife and uh, all this stuff. And he's like, actually, when we die, we're just fucking dead. It's blank. It's black. There's loophole. nothing there. He was just unconscious. He wasn't truly dead yet because he does come back to life. So that's not his afterlife. Um, maybe there's. Still I don't think that's the point is. they're making. I think. Uh, yeah, no, I yeah, was just I trying think, to make it sound a little dead. better. Yeah. yeah no i think um, he was truly dead and well, uh, he saw what he saw um, if, but not not only that but the idea that he was betrayed by his people by a boy he took under his wing mm-hmm. by like yeah he actually and, had the thoughts of i am dying this is my mm-hmm. last moment i will take my last breath here in a couple seconds and i know that all my friends betrayed me or like not all everyone but like, yeah yeah and, and then, then and then he wakes up a couple like however long later it could have been an eternity it could have been seconds you know like uh, we have no know. idea what yeah. non experience there he probably um, doesn't know either he's just bad. yeah exactly yeah but uh, uh wow yeah there's just there's just so yeah i think he just does not like thinking about it and not only mm-hmm. that but he doesn't want it to be celebrated you know it's yeah. like it's not a thing that should be like because he he does not like it. He does not like that it happened. So, mm. uh, but regardless, uh, you know, their conversation is interrupted. John is saved by the bell by the return of the recently healed Jorah Mormont. And this was one of my favorite scenes. Uh, loved this to death. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Daenerys introduces Jorah to John, who says he worked under Jorah's father in the Night's Watch. He was a great man. And uh, when Jorah reaffirms his allegiance to her, she accepts his offer of service and hugs him. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jorah comes back again and is like. Fuck, you know, like uh, he's, he's just... why does she always have someone way hotter in? Uh, why stay, does she like... always have a sexy young boy toy around? Damn it! God damn! Uh, yeah, boy yeah. Jorah. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, and he's <laughs> just shown up, and now he's got to go north of the wall too. You yeah. know, right yeah. off rip, pretty much. And I like to think of this as a him putting to rest any hopes. That that and I think he already has any hopes that anything more will ever happen. Yeah. But like he he looks at John and he's kind of like, good, you know. Like, yeah. Yeah. Or, the more he learns know, about uh, John, it's probably even like all right, better, you know. Like even. And what's what's fascinating better. too is this is the most the, the most intimate Daenerys is like ever. She even like puts the hand on the nape of the neck and everything and pulls him in for the hug and every like it's mm-hmm. it's extremely mm-hmm. intimate. It's not something she does with anybody that's she doesn't true. hug anyone yeah, like not, that's not a thing she does yeah and 
Dario, I mean, it was strictly in the bedroom. Outside, mm-hmm. not even a – nothing. I mean, not, not, no – Hardly a thing. Yeah. So, Jorah, hey, I mean, it's – yeah, it's uh... – Big big step here for Jorah, but yeah, he 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 recognizes it for what it is, you know. Mm-hmm. I think I think he's made his peace, yes, but uh, definitely. Um, later on, we get my favorite scene of the episode where Tyrion and Varys are discussing the deaths of Randall and his son Dickon in the I Reach, love it. Awesome. and uh, you know he's like uh, Tyrion's like. She gave them a choice. Yeah, she she know, definitely or... did. Gulp, 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 gulp. She, I mean, she gulp, gulp, gulp. she gave them every choice. They they had you know the, many opportunities. Gave them every gulp, opportunity gulp, gulp, gulp. they could have yeah. they could have just bent the knee. They could have sworn allegiance. It could have been fine. You know, it, it very much so could have been fine. Yeah. Gulp, 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 gulp. Um, and, and even Varys, Varys he, and then he's like, I gotta even take a drink for this one. He's like, uh, Varys is like, let me see that real quick. Yeah, uh, yeah, brother. Uh, yeah, I recall feeling this way. Once or twice in my day, uh, you know, I remember the Mad King's role in killing Rickard Stark and his son Brandon Stark. You know, it, it Tyrion insists, you know, he she is not her father, and Varys agrees up to a point. You know, Danny may not have her father's madness, but she certainly has a growing ruthless streak, which in Varys's view must be curtailed by Tyrion's more pragmatic counsel. And uh, you know, he uh, one of my favorite line deliveries, just Varys being mm. like, it's not me doing it. You know, it, it, it's not me. I'm not I'm not the one doing it. Uh, the smell of burning hair fills the room. I'm not the one doing yeah, it. You know, like that, that whole, whole thing time being like, um, uh, he's like, uh, you're not you are not telling me what I wanted to hear right now. You're telling yeah. me the opposite. Like, I, I no, I'm not responsible for this. Um, but no, yeah, very, and he's not. But to a but point, you know, you got bit. like, yeah, and that, if you let this keep going, you exactly. are. And that that was his you whole know? point. He was like Tyrion saying something like, "I'm the hand, not her head." You know, I can't make her mm-hmm. decisions for her. And to Daener- and <clears throat> Tyrion being like, "She, there's no way that she's her father." You know, no way. And Varys is like, "Yeah, no, of course not. Not yet. You know, not yeah. not with the right counsel. Not with um, what you need to do." And uh, I don't know, a very, I, I, you know, maybe uh, I'd say a very un, people like to say it's sped up and very fast, but this is one of those classic two characters sitting in a throne room just talking and, and great that's character why, like, I fucking, and again, Peter Dinklage and Con Hill getting to act off each other mm-hmm. one-on-one. It's been a little bit, you know, like, I know they had their little reunion, uh, and Essos when he's like, oh, I did miss you. And they've had their one-on-ones here and there when they're walking through the streets of Marine and stuff. But it was nice. I don't know how many more of these we're going to get. So I, I'm I'm trying to cherish them as much as I possibly can, you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I loved this scene. I, I went with it. it the, both of them just performing their asses off. And, uh, again, Conleth Hill's monologue, one of my favorite parts of the episode here. Uh but uh, they discuss a sealed scroll containing a message from Bran Stark from the North for the King of the North, which, of course, yeah. Varys has read. Yeah. Um, yeah. What? Well, uh, well, what's that? Oh, a sealed, or you know, or what's on it? Yeah. 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 It's like, oh, so what's it say? He's like, it's a sealed scroll for the King of the North. Oh, you know, come on. I would never. And they take like a little pause, and then Tyrion's like, he's like. So what's it's on? A mess. Yeah. So what's yeah, on? Yeah, it? Yeah, it's fucking uh, good, man. <laughs> they're they're a great duo. That'll be a fun one for the five by five potentially for the pairs Ooh. section. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. There's so many of them. There's so many of them. That's going to be such a hard category to limit down. Uh, but uh, later on at the chamber of the painted table, John tells Daenerys about the news of his half brother Bran and half sister Arya Stark's return to Winterfell. You know, he wants to go home to Winterfell, concerned by Bran's vision, which warns the army of the dead are getting closer. And Jon is worried the undead army will make it past the wall and advance on the north. And Danny notes that Jon doesn't have enough men to fight the army of the dead. He says, we're going to have to do with what we have. You know, you're welcome to join us. But if you're not going to, I'm going to go. And Danny is worried that Cersei will take advantage and march in if she focuses her, her efforts to the north. And Tyrion is present and proposes bringing, you know, what if we bring them to her? Mm-hmm. And they're like, isn't that exactly what we don't want to do, dumbass? 
Uh, and he's like, no, no, oh, you exactly. idiots. How about we get one? Yeah. We get one, we bring it down here, an undead soldier. Frankly, he's also like, frankly, it would help me a lot too. I trust you, but like, it would help let's everyone. see this. Yeah, let's, it would help let's, everyone. It would, everyone would see what this is. Um, mm -hmm. Provide a true evidence that the army of the dead is real. Convince her so we can reach a truce. And Varys opines that it is suicide trying to appeal to Cersei, but Tyrion argues that he can persuade his brother, Jaime. And Davos is the only one who might be able to smuggle Tyrion into King's Landing. Jesus, we have a lot to go, don't we? Um, King's Landing, and then just a little bit of Eastwatch. It's not. No, I know, but I'm but, like, yeah. uh, persuade his brother, Jaime. Davos is the only one who can smuggle him in. I'm like, that's this episode, yeah. too. This is a big one. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's the only one who can smuggle him in. Everyone looks at him, and he's like, Fine, you know, uh, lo love, love that guy. Absolutely love Liam Cunningham. But uh, yeah. mm -hmm. if anyone like recognizes mission, you, though, I can't promise I'm not much of a fighter, you know, or whatever. I'm not much of a fighter myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's, you know, such a risky mission is is risky even for a smuggler like him. Uh, Jorah vol volunteers, you know, I will go, my queen. Uh, no, I need you here. Mm. Stay. Yeah. You you bid me to get well so I could serve you. Let me serve you, my your grace. Um, we could use and, the help. Uh, John, I think John, you know John even throws yeah, out or something like that. We could use the help. Um, uh, you know, John volunteers to lead the expedition since the free folk won't follow Jorah, and he is the only one who has experience facing them. Whenever John is like saying like that, he has to go or what? Daenerys is literally like, no, 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 like it, no, 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 like yeah, she was like, she's like, I have not given you permission to leave yet. Actually, uh, yeah. no, you yeah. can't go. Um, That's when he delivers my favorite line of the episode when he says, "With respect, to your grace, I don't need your permission. I am a king." And she was like, "Oh, uh, she was yeah, like, yeah, oh, um, yeah, no, I haven't heard. It, it, oh. Yeah, she was uh, like, uh, I don't hear this ever. Uh, everyone is always just like, yeah, you are obviously our queen. Uh, but for him just to be so confident in himself, you know, she was like, oh, okay, dude, okay. fucking love this. Um, I yeah. loved it, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, he tells her she has the power. Uh, she has the power of life and death over him." but that he trusted her even though she was a stranger. He pleads with her to return the favor by trusting him. And uh, later, Davos and Tyrion chat about smuggling before embarking on their mission to infiltrate King's Landing. And Davos plans to find Gendry, while Tyrion wants to secretly meet with Jaime to find a peaceful solution Let's to go. the war. Let's go. The boy. He's coming back. Um, I love this little piece of trivia that I, that I read, is that a lot of characters... Um, and a lot of actors, they wouldn't really tell um, if they were coming back or not, that they would write them in the script in ways where they wouldn't know if they were returning for a, long, a season mm. in, or whatever. Uh, but apparently Gendry was just always in the know that he would come back eventually. Like, he, he just right. knew from... Because we haven't seen him for a long time. Like, dude... Season three, four, dude was rowing. Four, dude was just rowing, you know. He and that's the last time we saw him was Davos put him in a boat and was like, "Hey, just go," uh, and that's it. That's the Man. last time we saw him. Yeah, I wonder how long um, that's been. Yeah, when I wonder what episode that actually is. I'll try. Here, to I'll be able to. I'll be able to click on it and tell you at least what season it was. Let's yeah. see. He's in seasons. It was season three. Oh, Jesus, my God, yeah. So like. You know, that's a long time, but he knew he would come back. And then that got me to think is like, I wonder why. You know, why if, so George R. R. Martin had to have told D&D, &D, like, Gendry Baratheon will go north of the wall or that's something true. along those lines. Like, he, he had to have said, like, Gendry will have to come back. So I'm like, why? And then I started to look at, like, the suicide squad that is going north. And there's, like, one from every major house that is left yeah. afterwards no it's super it so, is like it is the biggest like joining of like all branches of the story yes. that is so fucking cool yeah uh um, but uh after their quest to king's landing which we will get to mm, uh before yes. long uh unfortunately they go and they come back and we got a little bit more at dragonstone so davos and Tyrion return with gendry in tow uh 
at the Dragon Glass Mines. They meet Jon Snow, supervising the diggings and excavations. And Gendry remarks that Jon is a lot shorter than he expected and immediately blurts out his true parentage on the assumption that Jon will value honesty and will appreciate the idea of Ned Stark and Robert Baratheon's bastards joining forces. And I love the way that, like, Jon kind of, like, loosens up and is like, you know, I, I grew up on stories about them, you know, like yeah. uh, it, 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 he's got like a true mm -hmm. equal. It feels like to him. He's like, yeah. oh, shit. Because yeah, whenever Gendry calls him uh, short or whatever, he's he, like, John's kind of like at first he's like, I don't know if I like, you know, I am a king, but I kind of yeah. like you being I like I, I like how you're, you like you're real, man. You yeah. know, like you're a real one. Um, I like the I like I like I like you, dog. I yeah. like you a lot. I gave Gendry uh, but, my uh my character for the episode. Good. I just, yeah, I mean, great. I loved his return. I loved how confident he was. He was like, I don't know what I was waiting for, but I knew I was waiting for something and I'm ready to go. And Davos is like, I haven't even told you, like, you should know what you're about to go sign up for. Like it's uh, yeah. kind of not the nicest thing. At, like, I've been waiting. Um, but yeah, kind he's, of a little bit of a uh, Lord. Like that's you know. his, his Lord of light. Like it's not the Lord of light telling him it's not whatever, no God, but it's like in his, own whatever mm -hmm. you know his own beliefs he just well, i'm also i'm also you know. talking about what you were talking about a second ago like the actor being like i didn't uh, know exactly but i did I, yeah. I always knew when it would when it was time you know <laughs> oh, like maybe uh, it was like a little meta yeah, yeah like, a little bit uh, of a fourth i have been there, waiting but, uh, for quite a while for the, yeah. the call back and thank fucking quite god meta. after you but, know uh, midway through season seven um I, i'm finally coming back um but yeah I don't know. Love, love me some yeah. Gendry. So I'm throwing him. Yeah. Throw, is that his first, actually? Um, probably. Probably. I think it is. Um, it is. But yeah. It is his first. Okay. Have you um, punched in all of them for us? Uh, me, yes. me and you? We're at or? 128 okay, cool. right now. So previous episodes have been punched in, but not this Okay. Episode. We need we need to get to the yes. 130 mark today. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Gendry volunteers to accompany John on his mission to the north to capture White and convince Queen Daenerys and Queen Cersei that the true war lies north. And as Jon Snow and his party, including Jorah Mormont, prepare to depart on boats for Eastwatch by the sea, Danny and her entourage arrive to bid them farewell. Danny quips to Jorah that they uh, they should be used to saying farewell to each other by now. And uh, Jon arrives at the beach as they are saying goodbye and playfully quips to Daenerys that if their mission is unsuccessful and he doesn't return, she at least won't have to deal with the King of the North anymore. And Danny responds that she's grown used to him. <laughs> hinting that you know like uh, uh, uh actually no i don't i don't i uh, like that idea of you leaving and not dealing you know with what you. frankly i'm, I'm uh, kind of down with the king in the north if i'm being for real uh mm -hmm. what's up nephew no. uh but uh <laughs> damn it <laughs> yeah he does he does call her a stranger uh in this episode which yeah. i thought was was also hilarious we learned the you know, I guess we already knew Rhaegar, and uh, like the parentage is already known. But then getting that like uh, yeah, like that further drop leap in there, after that, yeah, yeah, and then him just saying like uh, trust in a stranger. Come on, you know, I trusted in a stranger, and they're uh, yeah, they're dead. You, know. uh, you, you fuck your aunt here soon. Uh, but uh, uh, John, you know, wishes her good fortune in the wars to come before he leaves, and Danny and Tyrion watches Jon Snow and his party depart for East Watch. Mm -hmm. In King's Landing, Jamie returns to inform Cersei of the defeat. He flatly insists that the Lannisters have no chance of defeating Daenerys, even if Cersei were able to buy enough mercenaries to replace their huge losses. Uh, Kyber and Scorpion did little more than anger Drogon, and neither the Lannister soldiers nor any mercenaries will be able to match the hordes of Dothraki. Killing them was not war, it was sport. They did it for fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jamie already being like, no dragon. I'm not even talking about the dragons yet. Just the Dothraki. We're already screwed. We're already fucked. We don't stand a fucking chance against her army. And then she has three fucking dragons. You know, like, uh, and when they put it like that, it, it really does make you go, now why? Why have they not done anything? You know, like, I, I know that they need, they feel like they need the support of the Westerosi houses and they're trying to, you know, garner that support to a degree. But at some point, just lay siege, bro. Just do That's it. True. Yeah, it's just, and again, laying siege, it's like all the citizens in King's Landing also suffer from that. That's true. That's true. You know, it's like the idea is to starve them out, you know, and then the people in the castle are going to be the ones still eating very fine. That's fair. So. Yeah, the citizens would all die prior to the siege being successful. So that's fair. Um, yeah, sieges but, yeah, aren't. Yeah, Cersei's side yeah. 
it's better than just all out war, but maybe yeah. not actually it's more of like a slow death i don't know yeah um, that's fair but but yeah cersei snidely asked jamie if they are expected to surrender to a queen whose throne cersei occupies um and whose father jamie betrayed and murdered uh, mockingly remarking that Tyrion could intercede for them with daenerys as an apology for killing joffrey and tywin mm-hmm. um and i just want to say up front here i also went with lena hetty for my performance mm-hmm. uh He's fucking great throughout yeah. this entire thing, and it is this right she here awesome. that did it. Uh, when awesome. Jamie goes, he didn't do it, and she's like, "What are you talking about? We literally, we literally know that he shot our father while he was sitting on no, not him, Joffrey." Uh, and she's like, "You still defend him? You couldn't?" Pu-. And he's like, "Oh, Lena Tyrell confessed," and the way she like, she sits down, like she just She's... she sits down yeah. and looks down yeah. for a second. And then, like, looks up and is like, was this before or after you so kindly gave her the poison you wanted to give her? Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I shouldn't have listened to you. That bitch should have died screaming. You know, I was like, oh, my yeah. God, Lena Headey, you're, oh. you're something else. You know, I'm, Dude, when I saw it, yeah, like. She, and the denial she goes through briefly, too. She's like, she was lying. Nope. Yeah, obviously, yeah, like, she's dying. Like, oh, did she say this right after, you know, before you gave her the poison? This is a dying person's, you know, last words. And then. Jamie yeah. just being like, come on. If you Think were Elena, who would you rather want your granddaughter your marrying granddaughter. Tommen or Joffrey? You know, who made... You know, and that's when... And it also gives you, like, a fantastic look at Cersei and the way she views her kids. You know, like, she, we know she knows Joffrey was evil. She, she couldn't control him. She couldn't do anything about him. Mm-hmm. So, like, whenever she, like, has to sit back and acknowledge that truth, like... Yeah. And, yeah, and Jamie yeah. saying, like, who makes Olena the true leader of the Seven Kingdoms? And that's, like, what kind of got to her. It was kind of, yeah. like, also, like, damn, she was actually, like, in a very, she very undermined me so power. deeply that mm-hmm. she was the de facto ruler. Um, you know, and I think that her house is gone. Uh, they don't exist yeah. anymore. So that that is one thing. Yeah. Um, um, but to Cersei. Yeah, like, I... Yeah. I think that's a t- it's a touch overstating it, you know. Uh, what what would make Olena the de facto ruler of the Seven Kingdoms? Like, Olena didn't wield her power like that, she you was know. Kind of um, chilling though. She was living. Like, no, she was comfortable. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. She was comfortable. Yeah, she she would have been comfortable she didn't really regardless. Use it. Um, yeah, she never really yeah. used her. If power. she had used it, none of the shit that happened would have happened. You know, like uh, if if she was the ruler of the seven kingdoms, the sparrows That's get true. squashed. Yeah. Nothing goes anywhere. Like it's That's fair. So, I think it's a bit a bit of an overstatement, but I it, the general idea of it, yes, it it does resonate. I think he's more saying it to pierce Cersei's armor mm-hmm. more than saying it is fact, mm-hmm. you know? Um Yeah. But uh yeah, in the you know, in the same in the same way that Tywin became the true ruler when Joffrey sat on the throne, you know, but uh, feeling cheated of yet another vengeance, Cersei can barely contain her fury as she laments, listening to Jaime saying Elena should have died screaming. And uh, Mm -hmm. Jaime says she's dead nonetheless, along with the rest of House Tyrell, that they will go the same way unless they are careful. Like we are fucked. We are going to die. Uh, And Jaime sees no other path to victory. Tyrion now stands against his own siblings with a foreign invader possessed of a large, fearsome army and three ferocious dragons. And Cersei dismisses his protests, however, making it plain she intends to fight to the death rather than surrender her throne. And, uh, you know, as a soldier, he should know what that's like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's like, you will fight to the death for me Mm -hmm. because you're a soldier. Nothing more. You know, like, it's a a great fucking... A line earlier in the episode, um, whenever Daenerys is is, uh, about to execute um, the Tarleys, um... Tyrion tells her, hey, nothing nothing like a g- good old time in a dark cell will clear bold True. lines up yeah. from, from anyone. And then this episode, we have Cersei, not in a cell, but pretty what? much in a cell. The Locked red, in. The Red Keep is at her glorified cell. A giant um, prison. And yeah. right now, her mind is, I will, I am going to die trying. As of right now. Late this episode yeah. it changes she has time to sit by herself think about it and then she's mm-hmm. like I, I there is some other news i guess 
um, that that probably changed you know uh, changed her her thinking on it that but way. Still, but still, no, I, I kind of yeah, like I, I, I don't know if that was purposeful man. to like uh, Tyrion saying that line and then having Cersei kind of actually go through this um, mm -hmm. in in the episode. Um, but I I don't know. I kind of I liked I liked the. I liked it being happening to Cersei anyways, because it does show like it, it, it's truly in character for her to be like her first thought is like, Oh, she fuck She actually killed my kid. Yeah, no, I'm like, I'm heated up. I'm going to die. Like I'm going to kill everybody. Right. And if I die, so be it, but I'm going to try to kill everyone, uh, you know, in the meantime. And, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I really like that, that it kind of happened that, that way this episode. Um, no, I did too. I did too. And uh, Lena Hetty just all the while making mm. every scene, her bitch, yeah. Just absolutely She's, dominating uh, it. She is the um, queen. This gives her 18. Um, yeah. Amelia Clark at 15. Um, and Kit Harrington. Uh, he he did get mine. I don't know if I've officially said that out loud. Oh, I don't believe you did. Um, but he goes up to 14. Uh, so Okay. So, yeah. And then officially top this three, episode. Cersei, um, Danny, and John. Mm -hmm, okay. Top three. And character-wise... Um, did you say Tyrion? Yours was Tyrion? Is that right? Yes. Then yeah, this now ties him with Oberyn Martell, uh, with Pedro Pascal. Finally, Finally. he's been reached, uh, which is insane. By Tyrion Lannister. Yeah. By Tyrion Lannister. Um, yeah, Jon Snow's still chilling at 15. But um, but yeah, and Gendry at 1. Let's go. Uh, that's, that's the... Gendry at 1, baby! That's the, yeah, the, no, uh, the update, though, for all the stats. But Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. But uh, later on, beneath the Red Keep, Bronn purports to lead Jamie to a sparring session among the skulls of the Targaryen dragons, only for him to discover it is really a secret meeting with his estranged brother, Tyrion. And Jamie is initially angry that Bronn has arranged the secret meeting. Tyrion, you know, compliments Jamie on shrewdly and unsentimentally abandoning the Lannister seat of Casterly Rock. You know, uh, his father would be very proud, as he puts it. And, uh, no, 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 snapping. Don't talk about father. Yeah, you don't get to, um, mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah, I almost went with uh, Coaster. What's his Nikolaj? Uh, almost went, yeah, almost went with him for a performance. Yeah, last here. I, last I had checked, um, that's who you had in. So I was surprised mm -hmm. that you picked Kit, Kit and, Harrington. And I think Kit Harrington just kind of had more. He had a lot more screen time here. True. A lot, a lot more. This to, moment to though, do, but yeah, it was strong. This was the scene strong. that made me punch it in. Um, like yeah. his reserve, like he was reserved at first and kind of holding back, you know, waiting his for Tyrion to well say the wrong tears. thing. And then right yeah. when he mentions Tywin, it's like, don't you fucking talk, about, you know, don't talk about him. And, and Tyrion, like trying to diffuse it all by com, you know, his comedy or just trying to make it funny. And Jamie's just like, I, mm -hmm. the, I, I told Bronn the next well, and then I whenever he snaps. You, yeah. You know, he he's like, father knew I was innocent, but he still condemned me to death. Like he's still hung. Like obviously, he's still hung up on it. He killed yeah. his father. Over it. That's something that sticks with you. Um, mm -hmm. But Tyrion's but, defense uh, was was good too. Like Tyrion's performance here was also like great. Like Nick. Yeah, I almost uh, from Peter Dinklage. Like, yeah, that, like do you... the, the three top three um, options for me performance wise were Cersei, Jaime, and Tyrion, uh, yeah. which is the Lannisters were going all in this week, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, having hated him all his life for being a dwarf, he's like he was he was gonna kill me. And Jamie's like, "What the fuck do you want? You know, like what what do you, what, why are you here?" Uh, and Tyrion responds that Jamie knows that Daenerys will win this war, and tells him that Daenerys is willing to make a peace with Cersei under certain conditions. And Jamie's like, "She wants to make peace. She's winning. Why the fuck would she want to do that?" And uh, he tells Jamie about Daenerys's terms. Meanwhile, Davos visits Flea Bottom and eventually finds Gendry, which we already kind of went over, so I'll kind of breeze through this. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, you know, he explains that he's preparing for he's been preparing for such a moment and readily agrees to come with Davos. And Davos is like, "Yo, it's going to be hard. It's going to be dangerous. Are you sure? You you ought to take one of the one of those swords that you've been, uh, you know, smithing." And Gendry's like, "No, nah, I'm a I'm gonna do this hammer. Uh, I smash this. Um... This I know." And he does, um, he does know. He do know. Um, he, he do, do know. Uh, know. It is known that he know. Mm -hmm. um, Sick little. Uh, this little line delivery fucking killed me. By the way, like whenever he's like, "This I know. I know." This I this, know. This I know. Yeah. He throws it over his shoulder and just kind of like marches on out of there. Like I just mm -hmm. thought it was like, it's so fucking funny because like you saying that about the actor 
being like uh, ready to come back. It, he's just you absolutely so feel that. yes. He's yeah, just like, so ready to go. He's like, holy fuck! Yeah. Thank God I'm back in the show. Thank God I'm not making weapons for the Lannister army anymore. I'm just actually doing something cool. Um, cool little piece on his uh, or trivia on his hammer. Uh, he has the the stag, the House Baratheon stag, uh, kind of made out of, yes. out of metal, yeah. kind of on there. Um, but it's the taking pride in his roots. Yeah, you but know? the colors um, are reversed. Uh, the green and gold of House Baratheon. It is um, usually a gold stag on a green background, I believe. But on his hammer, it is a green stag with a gold background, um, and I, I, that is a a bastard custom um, to do. If you want oh, to, okay. If you want to still show your house, you have to if. If you're a bastard, you have to swap the colors uh, to show that you are a bastard. Uh, but he's that's so like, fucking cool, you know. Yeah. Like I actually, it's I actually dig sick. that, and like, uh, it's actually kind of yeah. sick. Like and I so, love that he was like, you know what? I'll Fuck take yeah. honor. In know, it, I'll do know? it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, because no, he does that, that introduce just himself. My support yeah, because he introduces uh, himself to uh, to John is like. I am Robert Baratheon's bastard. Like he doesn't say it as yeah. like I'm Robert Baratheon's bastard. He's like I'm his bastard. Like you're a bastard. We're like we're so cool. Like I don't like uh but yeah. So Look at us. Yeah, no, it was funny. Uh I remember when this show was going like the first time I was watching this show. Um my, <laughs> my parents had me out of wedlock. I was I was I was at their wedding. Um so like uh whenever I was uh, I if I could be like, look at what look at what me and Jon Snow have in common, baby. You know, like, I'm like look at us, look at us bastards, yeah. and then they reveal it, and I'm like, fuck, you know, He's uh, not but, uh, actually a bastard. Damn no, it! Yeah. Uh, in everyone's Shit. eyes, though, he is, you know. So, and he's lived his whole life that way. So, like, he yeah. kind of no, yeah. He earned he, like it's not a title you want to earn, but he did. You know, it's like I don't want to yeah. like say like he earned John's that a bastard. bastard. <laughs> yeah, like John's a bastard, and I'm so proud of him for it. But no, it's like it makes him who he is, you know. And he's yeah, no, um, no. I'll, I'll I'll proudly I'll proudly boast a, a commonality between me and Gendry, you know. Yeah. Um, Mm-hmm. But uh, later on at the shores of Blackwater Bay, Davos and Gendry, having placed his hammer in the Davos's boat, prepare to leave but are spotted by a pair of gold cloaks. And Davos pretends to be a common smuggler and bribes the guards with coin. Mm. Uh, did you recognize one of these gold cloaks? Uh, from this show earlier on, one of the, oh, really? the one of the dudes, the dude on the right, was the guy who played Ned Stark in the production in Essos. What? I'm fairly certain. He looks just like him if it's not him. Oh, uh, wow. I didn't look into it. I just purely vibes saw him and was like, that's got to be the same fucking guy. What's that mean? You remember that guy? That I'm fairly certain that's no him. No uh, Yeah, I guess. Oh, that kind of does look like him. Maybe. it. I'm looking at his picture right now. It's just Gold Cloak 1, Gold Cloak 2. Um, and Gold Cloak 1 is Kevin L. Eldon, L, Kevin Eldon. Um, looks like this is his only credited episode. Oh, season six, Blood of My Blood. Um, he's in Blood of My yeah, Blood. Yeah, no, his, Door his and on Nolan. IMDb. His picture on IMDb is him. Oh uh, my! Wow. Ned Stark. Yes, yeah, but so it he's is actually him. Wow. That's a that, yes, he's only in, yeah, he's only in Eastwatch of season seven, but in season six, I guess those are the three, the play. Episodes. Love the idea wow. that he like the theater company fell through after Lady Crane died and everything. Like Ari exposed that girl for like wanting to kill Lady Crane, and they're yeah. like, "Well, shit, everyone fell apart." He's like, "Guess I'll go be a gold cloak," you know, like uh, fuck it, I'm going to King's same Landing. Guy. Yeah, yeah. Definitely you, the same. He thing. had aspirations to be uh, to to live on the stage, but he had to settle for becoming a cop. Damn, you know, like I was uh, really hoping this other gold cloak, gold cloak two, was also in a previous episode. You know, that would be incredible. This is the only episode he is in, uh, Damn. though. Here, but, uh, but <laughs> it would have been awesome. Yeah, he strikes up a conversation. Davos does with the guards, and on being asked about his cargo, he shows them he is transporting fermented crab. Fermented crab. Uh, an aphrodisiac that is popular with the city's brothels. Uh, one dose of this, a man, a man ready to go back home to his family, his loving wife, his children. 
you give him one pop of this in his mouth and he's ready to go. He's back in the game. Uh, Davos is fucking cold with it, man. I love this guy. Um, yeah, he is. Yeah, he, un- he uncovers the crab while pulling the cloth aside to hide the hammer. Super smooth. Fucking mm-hmm. love that. Um, and he offers each of the guards a sample. And the guards are satisfied, if slightly disgusted, with Davos's explanation and bribe and uh, bribe and prepare to depart. It's like you better go, lest you poke a hole in yeah. that chainmail. Uh, find your your finest establishment. You know, I just yeah. the, every, the way he talks is just incredible. Dude. Yeah, the character he strikes up, you know, because that's like not what Davos is like. Yeah, I know it's his voice, but like uh, Gendry's like, ah, oh, so who should I be? And he's like. Damn it, Clovis! I told you. Yeah, if, you, if we're not out of here in five minutes or like soon, you I'm know. a Clovis. I told you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, he's uh, he's fucking incredible. I absolutely love it, and um, it's funny to think about Davos acting to an actor, you know. So maybe that's why yeah. he was kind of suspicious of him. Maybe he could clock that he was performing. Um, Head cannon for. But sure. regardless, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, Tyrion arrives at this very moment, and he is the most famous dwarf on Earth, as he is, or on in the world, as he is acknowledged before. Uh, realizing it's too late to turn back and not look suspicious, Tyrion walks right past him to the boat while looking downward. However, one of them recognizes the scar and asks him to stop, and they realize that he is indeed Tyrion Lannister and immediately see through Davos' deception, who again comes back to offer them more of the crab. Like, you really got to get to an establishment. You're going to get hard as fuck here in a second. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you guys got to go. Uh, yeah, this this is Viagra. You do not want to be you do not want to be in front of Queen Cersei with all just bricked up, you know. Like you gotta you, you gotta go, man. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. But uh, with their backs to Gendry and the boat, and before they can react, Gendry kills both of them by smashing their skulls with his hammer. Mm. And Davos, slightly exasperated, introduces Gendry to Tyrion, who Riley Riley observes. He'll do. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's pretty fucking cool. Uh, yeah, got me just one, two, done. Yeah, no, just... I mean, like, that's a heavy fucking weapon, you know? Like, that's... That's all you need. Yeah, it'll do that. One it'll do that. blunt force to the head. Gee, you know, yeah. good night. Yeah, um, I think that'll do. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. I mean... It, yeah, I'm pretty sure he that's was fine. swift with it, too. And he even made it look flashy, too. You know, the little, yeah, the little the twist little... and, like... <laughs> Yeah, like it was, it was super fucking. It reminded me of something. Oh, it, you know what it actually reminded me of was the, the White Walkers using their fucking like swords, like the yeah, way that they would. They kind of yeah, like, uh, that He's, sort of choreography, mm-hmm. um, yeah. the heavy swinging hitter. But uh, mm-hmm. later yeah. on at the Red Keep, Kyburn is visiting Cersei when Jamie enters her chambers, and Jamie tells Cersei that he met with Tyrion, and Cersei asks if Daenerys uh, wants to negotiate a surrender. Jamie tells her that Danny is seeking an arm- armistice due to the threat posed by the army of the dead. And Cersei's like, so what are you going to do to him? Mm, yeah. Are like, you going to punish him? What? what? Yeah. Bronn. What are you going to do about Bronn? Uh, he obviously arranged the meeting. Do you think there's anything in this city of importance that happens that I don't know about? <laughs> uh, okay. And- okay, Cersei. You know, like, I love how, in, in like, just to punish Bronn, too, going past the fact that that Jamie talked, you know, went behind her back. Mm-hmm. Like, she's bypassing all of that and going straight to, like, so... Well, and it's, it's, that, it's, again, a veiled threat, though. Like, it's like, uh, you know, what are you going to do to him? Yeah. If you oh, don't I intend see. to do anything to him, what am I going to have to do to you? I you see. know, like... Uh, yeah. Yeah. There And there was part of me um, before, like, there are a lot of things that actually, like, lead you to believe she is legitimately pregnant. Does she get a baby bump eventually? Um, no, no. Is this um, that is never this actually happened. the idea? I'm fairly me? certain. Is she just no? Yeah, like Jamie? that was a big speculation during the show's original run, whether or not she is actually pregnant. Um, I mm. can't. Rec- I don't think she gets a baby bump. Um, because it's probably not even because I, I mean we are we're almost months. There. Yeah, we are months away from the end of this show. Yeah, you know, like it is. It is about that time, you know, mm-hmm. like there is not much left. Once they go north, we're talking like weeks until the end of the show, bro. That's like it's fair. Yeah. Okay. Um, Cause I don't know. It just hit me this time that I'm like, I, it really feels like she's playing them. Like she's, she's desperate. Yeah. She's, she, she's she an drinks. act of desperation. She feels, yeah. she feels Jamie slipping away from her. She needs him in her corner she knows this will keep him. 
And yeah. even this doesn't. Yeah. Like this, I don't know. I, I, I really don't think she is for one how much drinking she does uh i don't know if a baby could survive in the womb for you know in cersei lannister's womb um but no i think i think because the line she delivers right at the, you know never betray me again or like like right you know right away like but it yeah it, they make out passionately and hug and there's yeah never betray me again it did feel somewhat genuine though you know like whenever she did hug him and like why, no, like, and that's the other thing is that like, I, I see the reasons why she would be lying, and it's simply for that relationship she feels straining with Jamie. Mm -hmm. But she tells Tyrion she's pregnant later. Okay, yeah, and there have been moments with Kyburn, uh, apparently mm -hmm. where he, he's been asking about like, Hey, have your symptom or are your symptoms? Okay. Or whatever of something. And he was in her room yeah. right here, right before Jamie, I you know, mean, came in. Maybe that's what they were talking about. You know, I don't know. Maybe I mean, this was like a either way, it, it, it is a fun, it is an interesting thing to try and speculate about. Like either way, it, it either adds, it either adds an extra layer of tragedy to the ending of these characters or or it adds an extra layer of tragedy to the way. Either way, these, it adds an extra layer of tragedy. Yeah. You know, like it's just either way, it's sad. Like it's, and that's what's interesting about it. But uh, you know, Cersei reveals she's pregnant uh, with another of Jamie's children, and you know, after reflecting, you know, he's like, "What will you say?" And she's like, "That that is yours." You know, we don't. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what father always said. And he says, the lion does not concern himself with the opinions of the sheep. And they hug. And he whisper, she whispers yeah. in his ear. Yeah, never, never betray me again. Never again. Um, I love just, uh, what does dad always say? Oh, and now let me say a line that our father says, now let's make out. Like, uh, it's just a. Yeah, the, the incestuous overtones are always a bit much, especially if you refer to another member of your family right mm -hmm. before you proceed to kiss your yeah. sibling. And also, like, saying, like, if we want to fight Daenerys, we have to fight her smart, just like dad would have. And then what did dad say about people? Uh, mm -hmm. We are having a baby. It is yours. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's a whole. It's a whole lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Um, <laughs> but but uh, yeah, that concludes the story there, and we head and conclude the episode in East Watch, where after landing, Jon Snow and his band meet with the wildling Tormund, who thinks that Jon's plan is suicidal, and mockingly asks, uh, "Which of the two ferocious queens is that? Is it that they need to convince?" And Jon's like, "Both." Yeah, um, yeah, both of them. Davos is like, I'll stay here. Not much of a use in a, not much of use for a, for a fight. And Tormund goes, No, you're not. Yeah, damn. Um, yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> and Davos is like, He's like, shit. Oh, you know, like, I mean, like, all right. Like, yeah, okay. he's like, yeah, I just said that. Like, you didn't need to clarify it. You know, you didn't like whatever. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Like, um, uh, you just kind of looked to John. Like, uh, we fought together in the Battle of the Bastards, but okay, you know, like, uh, yeah. Uh, we we had that c convo right before the Battle of the Bastards, you know, like yeah, I, I drink all night, I walk and shit, or whatever. I led, you know? I yeah. led a section of that battalion into war, buddy. Like I know how to fight. Okay, uh, yeah. not not so much, but he he's good at leading. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Apologies for what you're about to see. Uh, that's always one of my favorite lines. I'm not much oh, of a fight shoot. man. My line, Apologies for what you're about to see. My line. Uh, it came before. Um, it, it is from Davos. Uh, I just missed it. It's, it's oh, whenever, fantastic fucking line. Yeah, I yes, think, I think it's when uh, G he brings Gendry to the cave to meet John, um, and Gendry's just like, "Oh no, I'm going. Like I don't care. I'm I'm going north of the wall. I'm doing this." And Davos is just like, "All right, whatever." He says, "Yeah, nobody mind me. All I've ever done is live to a ripe old age." Um, yeah, yeah, all, like, I, all I've like, ever done is live to a ripe old age. Well, it's, yeah. it's true. There's like nobody in the show left who's Davos's age. And it hit me. I'm like, he, Davos isn't that old for our time, but for their but time. But in Westeros, yeah. I guess there are some maesters. You know, Maester Aemon. You know, Aemon yeah, really yeah, fucking. Aemon kind of fucked up the age. Uh, the you know, I don't know how long people live for. The um, average lifespan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Aemon uh, was like 110. He's I don't an know. Like, you know, he's kind of just now. Because yeah. like Viserys, I guess he was sick. Uh, and he he didn't really die of old age. He accelerated um, his age for yeah. sure. Um, I'm pretty sure he was like 60. 
you know like it's not like he was super old but mm -hmm. you know and I, I doubt Liam Cunningham's all that old either but like um you know 50s at this probably maybe 60 I don't know he looks great you know 62. like I think that that's Look, yeah. right now right now yeah oh so he was he was late 50s he okay. was late 50s when he delivered yeah. this line um but uh, okay I'm glad I had a keen read on him I was like if he is 60s at this time like late 60s I'm gonna be impressed brother mm -hmm. looks good um mm -hmm. Because yeah. even so, calling him 50, I was like, probably about 50. The only thing there is the thinning hair. Like, besides that, he's got a nice full beard. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, that's a that's a, that's a man right there. I love I love me some Liam Cunningham. But uh, if regardless, it Gendry, uh, you probably get the character of the episode yeah. if it weren't for oh, Gendry yeah. for me. But, uh, hard, hard to always pass up Davos. I love that guy. Uh, but uh, they later learned that the Night's Watch has detained members of the Brotherhood without banners, including Beric mm -hmm. Dondarrion, Thoros, and Sandor Clegane. Uh, and again, just the, the worlds colliding, Gendry being like, don't trust a word these motherfuckers say, bro. They sold me, and I got leeches stuck all over my body. Um, yeah, and this, right. this one scene, I think, perfectly wraps up how the Lord of Light, or whatever the fuck, greater power is going on here. Like, you have every yeah. different sect of, like, religion, kind of. Every different kind of person in Westeros. We have a Stark and a Targaryen rolled into one. We have a Baratheon. Yeah. We have a Mormont. We have a, Cle a Clegane. We have Thoros Amir. Uh, we got, what, Beric Dondarrion and Tormund Giantsbane. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's everybody. What a crew. Everybody what there. A crew. Um, but then you have, you know, the Brotherhood Without Banners that are obviously the Lord of Light brought us here. The Lord of Light told, you know, we have to go north. It's not even because we want to. We have to. Uh, we have mm -hmm. the Hound's kind of newfound, um, you know, Lord of Light kind of got him there as well. Gendry's just known. Yeah, he's like, he doesn't like, <laughs> he's not like devoted to the Lord of Light. He's just like, shit, man, I know what he told me and like. I know what I saw. Seems unavoidable. Yeah, you I know, gotta like, see if this is real. I, this is I kind of his well. spiritual journey, basically. Yeah. Um, and then Gendry just always knowing that he, he had something more. Um, I don't know if you recall, but the Hound really fucks stuff up whenever we go beyond, whenever we get north. In a good way um, or bad way? Uh, both, but mostly bad. Um, hmm. I don't really... There comes a point when the ice is so thin that, like, they just, they, like, fall through the ice, and the hound starts like chucking rocks at them to show like to like taunt them basically. And then one time a rock lands on the ice and stays mm. and they're like, uh, Oh, we're good now. We can come. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So he gives, I can't he wait for next. I can't believe that's next bit. episode. Like, that that is, episode. Fucks. That is next. Uh, yeah. It is, we get the suicide squad. What was it? Yeah. Beyond the wall. Just called beyond the wall. The yeah, John, Jorah, Tormund, Gendry, Sandor, Beric, and Thoros exit Eastwatch's gate and set out into the lands beyond the wall, mm -hmm. the land of always winter, uh, on a dangerous mission to capture the white to bring to Daenerys and Cersei. And thus, we conclude we this episode yeah. of Game of Thrones. Another goodie. Uh, nothing to add to the Arya, Arya kill list. Um, maybe, if anything a good storyline she killed this episode maybe i don't know uh, but that's not on her um that's on that's on the writers uh the right storyline got murdered um, yeah, um but yeah nothing nothing there obviously no hodors um so no yeah and i think that whenever we get to the rating here i, I enjoy the episode a great deal um mm -hmm. probably the not the weakest besides episode one but like the other episodes have been really standout. I feel like they've been yeah. particularly. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Uh, is that the last three episodes I I've really really enjoyed, and they're all a nine two five or greater. Um, I think this one's just kind of. I like, would even hesitate to give it a nine. Yeah, it's like, like I would it's, probably. The first episode's a one, um, or a one, an eight. Um, I was like, so, yeah, we gave, Jesus, we right? Hated, what were we on? We hated episode <laughs> one. No, yeah, we gave it an eight. So there's a lot of room in between there. I think it's closer to these episodes you know it's probably like eight seven five or an eight five i'd say probably eight seven five is more where i'm leaning um there are a few little tear ups uh, like when john met drogon uh, i teared up there um i don't know why that hit me so much here but it did i love seeing daenerys uh super horny for john that was awesome uh lena hetty just going off uh, in her own right i think yeah it was it was just kind of all around 
fun, but not strong. Fight it, was. it was strong, just not as great. Like the the stuff in the north really sucks the air out of it a little bit. I think uh, so. Eight seven True. five is about where I calm down enjoyment wise. Like I definitely like it more than the first episode mm -hmm. um, by like a lot. Like a lot of the stuff that happens in this episode is still really strong. I just do think it has to be dinged a little bit for mm -hmm. for that. Um, yeah, it would and be critically. Yeah, around. I mean, let's see. Shot well. What I mean, we like, it did. It did look good. Last episode was a nine two five. Um, probably around an eight seven five again. I think. Yeah, uh, I think kind of. It has to go there again. It's uh, it's it's a str it's really well performed. Even when Sophie Turner and Macy Williams are given kind of shit material to work with, mm -hmm. um, and not in terms of dialogue, but just like in terms of circumstance, like they're they're delivering solidly written stuff but it's not like it's, it's the story itself and it's not really their fault they do a good job with it it's mm -hmm. just it's tough um i think yeah that that does feel right um because still i mean i i think performed well is never really something i'm ever worried about in thrones it's yeah. more of like if their performances stand out on throne standards um kind of that that makes it more of a standout episode uh mm -hmm. but everyone's doing their thing uh, we got yeah, it. and how much does that kind of hurt this episode? The beginning of this mm. weird, veiled storyline. Um, mm. I think it does a little bit of something here. You know, it's not a... I think it's definitely preventing it from rising to nine standards, but I was already kind of not there even besides that. So, like, may maybe even an 8.5. Maybe we do give it a little bit of a... 825 maybe a little lower yeah. what do we give episode maybe. one episode one was a 675 um yeah i'm not I'm, I'm it's definitely better than the first episode but uh i think maybe even an eight maybe we get a little harsh here maybe we go ahead and ding it a little bit it'd come out to an 825 average uh, if we were to give it an eight which let's see put it in the ballpark not quite season six premiere um not quite un bound unbent unbroken episode six of season five there's no exact eight two fives at least none that i'm seeing now but um a lot of eight high eights yeah like uh see yeah i i don't know i think this is is right though it, it seems about right in eight two five um overall there uh still it would be third of the season we have episode two then episode four and then it would be three and then this one so okay yeah, yeah no i think I, I i that tracks it's a you know second second worst of the season but the first one was just that much worse you know yeah um yeah next episode i think i don't know it'll be another uh, we're gonna be on the up and up next yeah, episode if be... i say so myself there's a little, like, that. we're going to run into that little bit of a convenience thing in terms of we got to make stuff happen, so we're making stuff happen. It is the penultimate know? episode. Uh, which is God, crazy. fuck. Yeah, yeah it's it is. the penultimate uh, episode. Uh, so, yeah. It is. We got our, we got our seventh penultimate episode. Wow. Uh, and I am so, so very excited for next week. But with that, we will conclude this episode of winter is blooming if you would head to patreon.com slash penny bloom pod where you'll find over 50 hours of exclusive content including all sorts of book reviews comic book reviews movie reviews and the like also just a bunch of random fucking conversations about anything we feel like talking about uh, much less focused content than what we have over here sometimes sometimes not sometimes we are extremely focused you just never know we give you anything over there uh, and for three dollars a month you have access to that um for three dollars a month, you can support this podcast financially, which is huge because it costs me money, and I don't make any off of it unless it's over there. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Look at you. Look at us. Look at you. Uh, we appreciate you. Go ahead and throw us a like. Subscribe if you enjoyed. If you made it all the way to the end here, I have a feeling you enjoyed the show a little bit. Uh, and mm -hmm. if you didn't, do something better with your time. Uh, <laughs> or you're asleep and you, we are talking to your unconscious. You know, you, you fell asleep to this and you're not hearing it. Ooh, I wonder how much we um, could influence the unconscious mind right now. You will wake up yeah. and subscribe to our channel. It'll be the first thing you, you do when up, you wake subscribe. up. Um, you will wake up and subscribe. <laughs> uh, 
you will all of a sudden enjoy season eight of Game of Thrones for no reason. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> you will you will be completely unable to explain to your friends why you like season eight of Game of Thrones, but you will and you will you will enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it'll compel you but, to listen uh, to a season eight rewatch podcast on Game of Thrones, in which you, you are already here. You share um, our show with those you know and those you love and those you hate. Uh, you will share us with everyone, one and all. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> getting crazy now some Cer- yeah, cersei well, lannister of- curse prophecy you know which thrown on we're throwing on some people here like you'll have three yes. children they will all die um, <laughs> and you know you won't know when no, or, I or sure how hope not yeah. i sure hope not uh oh you bet bud uh but uh yeah in all seriousness we would appreciate it if you subscribed if you liked and mm-hmm. thank you for being here it's 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 wonderful. I love I love doing the video, and I'm glad we have somebody to watch now. It's super fun. Uh, go to TikTok if you want more video and edited video and mm-hmm. ran, like random bits and pieces of all of our podcasts. By now, when this episode's coming out, we got to have a bunch of them because uh, cool. I'm trying my best to post daily, um, and mm-hmm. we'll see if that's still working out. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we got we got a lot of look a lot of good stuff over there at Penny Bloom Podcast. Go ahead and throw us a follow, throw us a like. Throw us a throw us a view. Watch our shit. It's fun. A uh, bunch of good good stuff, ranging from funny to just our our analysis of stuff to random calm conversations about tea. You know, it doesn't matter. There's a bunch of shit over there. Sure. Um, yeah, all sorts of stuff. Impressions of uh, characters from The Dark Knight Rises. That's the one I published today, um, as of the date of recording. Um, but yeah. Um, Head to Twitter, follow at Penny Bloom Pod, follow on Letterboxd at Penny Bloom Pod, follow on Instagram at Penny Bloom Podcast, and remember to leave a five star rate and review and download wherever you might be listening. Uh, keep on coming back. Like we said earlier, we got season seven, episode six next week, the penultimate Beyond the Wall. But this week, we continue our comic book movie journey through film with a couple goodies. I'm super excited for this week uh, X Men Days of Future Past on Wednesday and Guardians of the Galaxy on Friday. So we're doubling up in a big way yeah. this week. I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be a fun one. Um, mm-hmm. On that Marvel. So, yeah, keep on coming back. Yeah. Keep on coming back. Um, we appreciate you greatly. Yeah. And then, uh, We'll, we'll be taking a one-week break from Thrones uh, after Season 7, where we will be doing our own little Penny Bloom Film Awards celebrating the, the year of 2023 in film, uh, mm-hmm. doing our own little precursor to the Oscars, which are the week after our awards. Yeah. You know, We just want to give you the true authority first. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do the uh, real I'll, show, and then you can watch the Oscars uh, and see how they You can watch the out. Oscars, and uh, fine. Um, <laughs> the people's opinion. They, uh, they know what they're talking about sometimes, but often not. We know. Um, we know what we like. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah we're fun. not trying to appease anybody um, besides ourselves. Um, yeah. But no, we love we love movies. We love film. We love TV. We love talking all this stuff. So keep on coming back. And uh, we, we, we try our best to show as much love as possible. And uh We appreciate you for joining us. With that, I was Colton Robertson. I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, homie. Oh, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it's always a pleasure to have you. And remember, peace, love, and bloom. And nobody listened to me. All I ever did was live to a ripe old age. (laughs)